Hi, this is Professor Paul Knopfler here at UC Davis School of Medicine. I'm a stem cell and cancer researcher, but I also devote some of my time to educational outreach. Part of that effort is through a blog I do called The Niche that I'll show you about in a minute. But I'm also doing this series of uh, educational videos here on YouTube on our channel to basically get the word out about what's real about stem cells, fact check stuff that maybe is less solid or outright bogus. And so as part of that video series, today's uh, video is on fact checking the idea of using stem cells for hair loss. So if you like these kinds of videos, uh, some of them are on stem cells, sometimes they're on other kinds of cells or CRISPR, please subscribe to our channel. So to kind of go through this topic of stem cells for hair loss, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you on this recent post I did about stem cells for hair loss. So here you can see my site, The Niche. Uh, for many years, it was just a blog. Now we have a wide variety of other resources here for patients, for other scientists. So please check it out. It's at ipscell.com. You can see that up here. But for today, we're just focusing on this idea of using stem cells for baldness. So I'm gonna kind of go through this post. And first I thought it'd be fun to kind of start with this picture. So occasionally here on, on my blog, The Niche, I'll run contests and oftentimes students and postdocs will enter these, uh, these contests. And, and one of the types of contests that I've had many times over the years is a stem cell picture contest. So with this, we're looking for really beautiful images related to stem cells and regenerative medicine. And in 2019, the winner of this was a postdoc, Cherie uh, Ger Cohen, who uh, took this wonderful image of uh, stem cells being used to regrow hair follicles. And this was done in mice, but in theory, the same kind of thing could uh, be done in people. And so you can see each of these little units here is a hair follicle that is growing out here and hair grows out of these follicles. So to have a healthy hair, you have to have a healthy follicle. And so in this mouse model of hair regrowth, the stem cells in the skin were able to regrow these follicles and grow hair. And again, the same kind of thing could be possible uh, in people. So before we get more into the idea or different ideas that um, could be the basis for treating hair loss, I wanted to kind of go through what causes hair loss. So for many of us who have um, lost some hair, this is sort of referred to as male pattern baldness. Uh, it's due to a form of testosterone called dihydroxytestosterone or DHT. And one of the drugs out there for treating hair loss is called finasteride. And it actually works by basically interfering uh, with DHT. So women can also experience hair loss. And oftentimes this is also due to androgens as well. It's important to point out that hair loss sometimes is it's kind of a misnomer because in, the, in many cases where it seems like hair is gone, it actually is still there. There's these little tiny microscopic follicles, for instance, still on one scalp. And, and in a way that kind of gives hope because they're still there, there are still living cells in them. And if we could kind of turn them around and get them back to that healthy state where there's a large follicle, it could grow out a large hair, then, then that could in theory reverse hair loss. So again, hair loss, kind of a tricky word um, or tricky term because, um, in many cases, the hairs are still there. Uh, again, it should be pointed out, hair loss can be caused by other things besides um, hormonal uh, changes. And so for instance, some folks have an autoimmune disorder where their immune cells attack their hair follicles, basically kill or damage them and they lose hair because of that. And I had a friend who had that condition uh, when I was back as a postdoc uh, in Seattle. Other people lose hair because of injuries or burns. Uh, and so that's also something to consider. So sometimes hair loss um, is just sort of a routine thing you know, that many of us experience as we get older, but other times it's due to an actual disease or an injury. So uh, I thought it was interesting that the, the great science writer, Gina Collada uh, over at the New York Times had a recent piece that sort of explored another possibility for how you might lose your hair. And that is that, in that follicle where the hair grows out, there's stem cells kind of associated with sort of the root of the hair follicle, if you will, kind of a bulging region down there, these stem cells that kind of live around there that are important for that hair follicle staying healthy. And if it's damaged, they're important for it kind of regrowing and kind of getting its health back, uh, kind of like that beautiful immunofluorescent stain image I showed you earlier. And so what Gina Collada reported on is new research that suggests sometimes around that hair follicle kind of root area, the stem cells kind of migrate away, they kind of escape. And as a result, the hair follicle may shrink or become unhealthy. 
and you might get small uh, hairs, uh, again, kind of these microscopic hairs that you can't see. So sort of escape of the stem cells might be another thing that, that could happen uh, leading to uh, baldness. So there's a lot of research. I mentioned this, this new research that Gina Colada covered, but I did a PubMed search. So this is just kind of looking at the, the published biomedical data that's out there on stem cells and hair. And you can see the general trend uh, is definitely increasing. So there's tons of articles out there on, uh, in this area. And, and that kind of gives hope for potential uh, actually proven safe and effective ways to reverse hair loss. So what are the prospects for basically in the future uh, having an actual treatment uh, for hair loss? You know, people have probably been uh, agonizing over hair loss for thousands of years. And there's been all kinds of phony stuff. Unfortunately, there's a lot of phony stuff right now. Some of that comes from stem cell clinics claiming they can treat hair loss with their favorite version of some supposed stem cell. You know, really none of that is proven. Uh, I'm not a physician, I can't give medical advice, but just as a stem cell biologist, I would really caution about going to any kind of stem cell clinic um, that is claiming to reverse hair loss. Uh, unfortunately, we're seeing a lot of creams out there that are claiming they have some kind of stem cell related ingredients in them that are somehow, you know, when you slap it on your scalp, for instance, somehow they're gonna reboot your hair follicles or something like that. I think uh, pretty much almost all of that seems to me to be bogus or at, at best really premature. So I don't think unfortunately those products right now or treatments right now are a good way to go. So looking to the future, I can think of three main ways that some stem cell related research might actually truly uh, help uh, hair loss. And the first approach is just what we might think of as kind of the simplest. So I showed you those images of hair follicles that kind of regrew from skin stem cells. And so the idea is if you could take a patient's own skin stem cells and somehow like grow them up in the lab, maybe change them in a way to make them more robust or something like that, if you could then basically uh, implant them in the millions into the scalp uh, of someone who has hair loss, in some cases, they might actually regrow new follicles and those follicles might regrow new large hairs. So it's a pretty simple idea, but, uh, but it, you know, and it's exciting, but it, it's actually more complicated than you might think. So for instance, if you did this in a patient who has a lot of that hormone DHT, uh, it's not really clear what would happen, you know, would the hormone basically cause the transplanted stem cell grown hair to again, kind of fall out and shrink down. Um, we don't really know. I think uh, it's possible that the stem cells uh, could be modified in some way to be resistant to the action of uh, that hormone. If you're talking about a person who has an autoimmune disease that where they're, again, their immune cells attack the hair follicle, any kind of new follicle grown from stem cells might again, just be attacked by the immune system. So you have to kind of take that into consideration, take the immune system into consideration in that case. So another idea, just kind of similar, uh, but I think maybe in some ways could be more promising is to actually first take the stem cells and grow the actual follicles and hair in the lab, and then put those, transplant those uh, into the patient experiencing hair loss. So the first idea is you just transplant stem cells and basically hope for the best that some percentage of them would make follicles that make hair. In the second idea, you're kind of being more direct about it and you're actually making the hair and hair follicles in the lab and transplanting those. To me, this seems like it might be um, a more promising way to go, but you never know. Again, you know, if, if DHT is an issue, would transplants of hair follicles and hairs, you know, just with those basically shrink down and, and not give a good result to the person uh, who received them because of the action of DHT or autoimmune cells. You know, it's not really clear, but those are kind of issues I think that need to be resolved depending on um, the person and their situation, why they experience hair loss. So it's possible that, you know, either the stem cell approach or the lab grown follicle approach made from stem cell approach, uh, you know, depending on the person, one or the other might have some advantages. I guess the advantage with the stem cells is you could literally transplant like a hundred million of them onto someone's scalp. And even if only a small fraction, like 1% made healthy hair, then you'd have a million new hair. So that, that, that's pretty amazing and might be less laborious than trying to transplant follicles and hairs uh, that you made in the lab. So the third main approach that comes to mind is, is not small, so much transplanting stem cells or stem cell grown hair follicles with hairs, 
uh, into people experiencing hair loss. But somehow the research on stem cells may point to drugs that can be developed like more traditional pharmaceuticals or growth factors that then could either reboot those really tiny hair follicles that are still left and, and make them grow large hairs, or they could stimulate the stem cells to grow new, entirely new follicles that maybe would be large. So, so I think this is another area that's pretty promising. Uh, you could imagine, for instance, there might be growth factors. I mentioned the hair follicle and the stem cells that kind of live around it. There's probably growth factors that keep those stem cells from leaving or keep them happy and growing well. So if you could just treat the scalp, for instance, with a, a drug that kind of expanded the scope or numbers of uh, skin stem cells that grow hairs, then that could do the trick. So I showed you that graph. There's a lot of research going on and it seems like the slope is more research. Um, so uh, I didn't say, what I didn't say is that there are actually hundreds of articles every year on uh, stem cells and hair loss. Uh, there are also a number of clinical trials going on. Here's a map from clinicaltrials.gov. I actually thought there would be more trials. I'm kind of surprised you know, that there uh, are not that many trials given the scope of this problem. Um, some of these uh, are not kind of the traditional transplant kind of idea. They're just kind of exploring uh, more exploratory and not so much interventional. So not all of these are even true uh, sort of treatments of hair loss kind of trials, but, um, but quite a few of them are. So I think that, that you know, gives some hope. Um, so there's, you know, a lot of research going on, there are clinical trials, you know, maybe there'll be more clinical trials as we move forward. Uh, I should note, you know, in addition to finasteride, there are other things out there like minoxidil. You know, these are things that right now for some people may work, um, but they do sometimes have side effects. They don't always work for everybody. So in the long run, it seems like a cellular kind of approach could be actually better or give better results. Uh, and I hope that kind of timeline looking to the future, you know, hopefully within 10, 20 years, we'll have a real safe and uh, effective treatment based on some kind of cell uh, product that reverses hair loss and that makes people happier about uh, their sort of hair, their hair condition uh, at that time. Again, I really wanna emphasize things out there right now, uh, other than already FDA approved pharmaceutical drugs, uh, in the stem cell space, there's really nothing that should be sold right now. I, say, I would say uh, for, for hair loss, whether it's creams or some kind of injections of stem cells into the scalp or IV injections of stem cells, a lot of these things just make no sense. Um, they're just designed to make the people who are selling them a lot of money. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you like this kind of video, please subscribe. And I hope to see you next time for uh, our next video. Bye-bye.